Hello basketball coaches and basketball players, my name is Alan from Alice Basketball Training and today I'm going to give you how I like to set up my 5 out motion offense against a zone defense. So these are just a few strategies that I run myself in the past as well as in the future uh, on how I like to try and beat a zone defense with a 5 out motion. So. First off, five out motions are very simple offenses. You pass the ball and then you have basically one of three options. You can cut towards the rim, you can go screen away to somebody over on the other side the way that you passed, or you can screen for the player that you passed to. Now from there, simple offenses lead to, well, simple, hopefully simple baskets. So let's get down to the clipboard, hit that like button, subscribe, and yeah. Let's get down to the clipboard and I'll explain to you how I like to start my motion offense. So first, I like to have my players set up in the motion to start. And then I like to have player 5 go down towards the low post first. Now the reason for this is if player 4 was to pop out and we start having a zone defense that looks like this... We could collapse the defense really quickly by passing the ball into player 5 and then setting a screen away or setting a screen even for player 5 or player 4 or you could even have player 1 set, or cut towards the rim down the middle and he may be open for a nice floater. Again, this is all in terms of trying to collapse the defense, where now you have multiple options along the perimeter. And at this point, you may even have four players surrounding player one who has the ball in the middle of the key, where he could pass to one of three players. And this leads to a couple, a couple of quick baskets right off the start. Now, the other thing to keep in mind too, where if the defense is located like this, we now have the ability, once player 1 passes the ball quickly down to player 5, he can go and set a screen away for player 4, he can cut towards the rim and set a screen away, where now player 4 can cut towards the high post, Meanwhile, player 3 is going up towards the top because he's filling that section. And then player 1 is going to fill out. Which now, because of the cut, that's going to be collapsing player 3. And now we have player 1 wide open on the opposite side. Now, the other thing to keep in mind when you're setting up the offense with a player down low to start. What's going to happen is this could be collapsing the defense. Where now when player 1 passes to player 2, player 1 can cut towards the rim, player 4 is going to be popping out, we're going to be having player 5 pop out, we're now in our 5 out motion, I only want player 5 to stay down there for 2 or 3 seconds and that's it, he's not staying down there for any longer than that. He's going to be popping out, which is going to be bringing player 5 out, which now may leave player 1 wide open for the pass back kind of like a give and go and now he can go straight in towards the basket now this could also collapse the defense as well where now we have player five and four open or player four could be driving or cutting baseline I mean where he could get that pass from player one for the layup there's so many different options that you can do out of the five out to collapse that two three or even a three two zone defense that it will blow your mind on how great the five out is against a zone defense. Now I know what you're saying. Hey, if we're if we have a post player for even one, two, or three seconds in the low post, that's not truly a five out offense. That is correct. That would be a four out one in. However, if you have a more advanced team, like I'm not talking about the beginner level teams, but if you've got a, a team that has players who can understand two different plays at once, then you can run a four out one in motion offense, have that player pop out halfway through the motion, now you're in a five out and you're spreading the, uh, the defense out even more. Now, from there too, once player five pops out from being in the low post, we're now in a five out, player one is cutting towards the basket. If that doesn't happen, let's say he doesn't get the ball, now we're just in a five out. Those players will fill the other spaces 
and player one is going to fill out the far end space. Now, if you don't understand how the five out works, I'm going to go over that really quickly right now, and I'm going to show you a few more tactics and tips on what you can use against a zone defense. So I've set up a 3-2 zone defense really quickly just so you can understand uh, how the defense or how the offense works. So when you pass the ball away in a 5-out, you have three options. You can screen for the player you just passed to. You can screen away to the player who is farther away, the opposite side. Or player 1 can drive towards the rim. Think of the 5-out as one big circle. And whatever player 5 does, he needs to, again, screen away, screen 4, or cut. Now, going from there, that's just very simple offense. You're also teaching your players, if you're beginners, how to screen, how to move off ball. Now, what do I mean by screening and moving off ball? Well, let's say player 1 cuts. We have player 3 and 4 moving, taking those spots, because there's 5 spots on the court. And player 1 is going to fill out the opposite side. These players are moving off ball, which is now teaching off ball movement. Player one is now past the ball. He's cut, which again is off ball movement because he got rid of the ball. Now, what we can have against a, for example, a 3-2, here's a strategy that I like to run, is having players who are, this might even be a double team. Let's, just, let's say they're running a double team. We're going to be having players who can really utilize off ball movement and what I mean by that is the fact that we can have player four set a screen for player three player two can try and dribble out of the double team or at least attack player one player three now has the ability to be wide open this is again totally off ball movement screen for a player that player gets open Player 2 sees what's happening. He attacks player 1 to try and get to an open spot so that he can get player 3 the ball. Player 3 can take that shot. Or, because if this screen was good enough, player 3 can drive towards the rim, maybe take a mid-range shot, or attack player 4 to bring player 4 out, which now leaves the baseline open for player 1 to cut baseline, simple pass down, and layup. So what we've done here is off-ball movement, not even the play itself. We're not screening away, cutting, screening for, whatever. No, this is totally off-ball movement, set play. Get the ball over to the guy who just got screened for. Have him drive towards the rim, collapse the defense on him. He may even get two low-post players collapsing on him where we now have players who can cut baseline and get open and easy baskets for those players. So this is why I like to run a five out offense with younger teams or beginner level teams is for one, it's a very simple offense to run. It's pass, screen four, screen away, or cut towards the rim. And then those players, once you go, need to fill in those other spots that are open because there's those five spots on the court. And then going from there, is the fact that now we can teach off-ball movement. We can say, hey, you know what? I want you guys on the court to think for yourselves. I don't want you to be always paying attention to or paying, listening to a point guard saying, I want you to go here or there, because he may not be always able to tell you, hey, you need to go and set a screen for number three over there, whatever is happening. And you can't always be hearing the coach because it may be a loud stadium, it may be a loud court, you may be in an away game in a high school or whatever it may be, but it could be loud, you might not hear the coach. And if you're running a five-out offense, what you can have now is your players understanding, oh, hey, that player on defense is cheating, so I now need to go and set a screen for that guy over there. He can move over to an open spot. If my point guard sees what's happening, he can get this player the ball, even though I'm not going to get credit for the basket. I'm not going to get an assist. I'm probably not going to get a rebound. I'm not getting a, definitely not getting a steal. I'm not on defense. I'm getting no stats whatsoever, but I'm getting a teammate open for some baskets, which then means that your player or your team is going to possibly win more games because you're helping your teammates score more points. It's going to now give your team the ability to say, hey, this dude's a team player. He wants to play for my team. 
He wants to be my guy. He wants to get me open. Which then gets into his head saying, well, sh damn. He got me open last time for using this move. Maybe I can get him open next time down the court and he can get a nice easy basket himself. And now you're thinking as a team. Now you've got your players saying, well, damn. If he's got me 10 points this game, I'm going to try and get him open next game to get him 10 points. And then maybe he can get me 10 points, I can get him 10 points. And now as a team, we got 20 points, 20 easy points, and we may just kick the butts off the other team. So that's why I like to run the five out. And if you can explain to your players why you're running a five out and what they need to do, what they need to look for, hey, that player is looking that way, which means he's not looking at me, which means I can cut baseline and say, yo, pass the ball. I got an open layup. Then it's going to be helping your team not just understand the, the, the plays because it's a simple play, but now they're understanding ball movement. And we've all seen highlights, if you're old enough, of Rick Hamilton from Detroit. He was fantastic moving off ball. He would cut baseline, and he would he'd get like 5, 10, 20, even 20, up to 20 points a game just for moving off ball, seeing an open area of the court, and getting an easy layup or an easy three-point shot. That's just because he was getting open. He was reading the defense and seeing what they were doing, and that allowed him to get himself a lot of easy points. I hope that this video helps you, I hope it helps your team, and I hope it helps your players as well. So definitely share this around, and I'll see you guys again later on today for the second video of the day, which is for players, basketball skills, and drills. I hope that you have enjoyed. Hit that like button and subscribe.